looking broadly or perhaps narrowly, either way is fine. What are you excited about with respect to the potential for nanotechnology to address challenges in the future? I can almost not think of a problem in the world that isn't potentially tackled by a nano solution. And I think that it's really important, and the NNI has been doing this for some time, to articulate those challenges in such a way that the research community can roll up its sleeves and really, you know, start tackling those problems. So the priorities of any particular administration or, you know, if you look out at the world, those are going to maybe at a very high level be common, public health and clean water and energy for all that's affordable and so on. These are problems that are going to be with us forever in a sense. Trying to put them in sort of the hands of the scientists in a way that they can make some move towards solving them, I think is often the challenge. And and that's where agencies that have a mission like DOE and so on, NIH and others, I think have a role to play in connecting those societal challenges to their research communities. More broadly, the energy landscape is a critically important area where nanomaterials is having an impact and needs to expand its impact. The best electron that we use is the one we don't use, right? So in terms of efficiency, there's tremendous gains to be made still there using nanomaterials, as there is on the creation of energy. One area we didn't really talk about is uh, biological systems. There's been a tremendous amount of work in uh, nanoparticles and, or nanostructures in the biological world. And that's an area where, you know, in terms of medicines, in terms of mimicking of biological systems, there's still a lot of work that can be done and a lot more impact to to be had. Yeah, and I still think that there's a lot to do in nanotech. I, I feel like the last 15 years, we've had a lot of applications in nanotech, but especially at the beginning, a lot of the focus was on, on understanding the physics and figuring out how to make the nanotechnology. But now we're transitioning to the point where, yes, there's still a lot of science being done, but there's more and more work on using that nanotechnology to make a difference. And I, I think it's it's really important that people recognize that in order for the United States to really capitalize on the investment that we've done in the past to understand the physics, we need to keep supporting this community so that we can then monetize all the work that we've done and and apply it to different areas. And so you asked what areas in particular I see, and I I think we need to focus on some of the bigger challenges left in the world to solve and which ones can be solved by more materials and better materials. And I think two of the biggest issues are energy and environment and medicine. So I'm very excited about um, both of those areas and the part that nanotech has to play in that. For energy and environment, I see batteries as being an important space that nanotech can really help with. And for medicine, there's a whole bunch of areas that we can help by providing nanotech. So in medicine, people are using nanotechnology, for example, to deliver drugs more effectively. And I mentioned our biosensors, so being able to detect more sensitively what's happening in our body. So imagine if every time you went to the restroom, you got a full reading of how your body's doing. And it can tell you things like you're dehydrated, you should drink a little more, you're a little low on electrolytes, you should make sure you eat a banana, or it gives you indications like, ooh, you better go see a doctor, something's going on with your thyroid. So that's uh, one thing I'm really excited about that nanotech can really make an impact on is medicine. Um, both in the diagnostics and the delivery of medicine. Well, I may be biased, but for scientists of my generation, I I truly believe the energy challenge is the the challenge we have to face. So how do we provide energy with a lower carbon footprint to a growing world population? That's where I feel uh, nanotechnology may be and could be actually a great enabler. The way I see the future is we will have to attack the energy problem from many angles. So we will have to build a portfolio of solutions. And maybe each of these solutions will change depending on geography, depending on the population or the specific uh, environment where the technology solution has to be deployed. 
in fields like CO2 capture, CO2 conversion into fuel and chemicals, conversion of natural gas into valuable product, energy storage. There are three critical areas that if we make progress, we can actually have a positive impact on the overall energy system. And in all three cases, mastering and understanding how to deploy nanotechnology at scale will be crucial. I mean, there are many. I would say in no particular order, <laughs> uh, just a few. One is just replacing the transistor. Right now, we are working with technology, transistor technology that was de developed in the 60s and 70s. So we've miniaturized it actually due to advances in nanotechnology, <laughs> but it's gotten to its limit. So in terms of what will a transistor look like in 20 years, I think nanoscience is going to provide the forefront tools to address that problem. One of the possible replacements, probably not in 20 years, but, but beyond, would be quantum computing. Right now, we have quantum computers that are strung together with a, a few dozen qubits, but the qubit, I think, is far from optimized. And it's not even clear at this point what long-term might be the, the preferred qubit in the quantum computer in the future. And I think understanding, you know, how energy is dissipated in qubits and how they might retain their state really through a nanoscale understanding of the materials and their properties at low temperatures, nanoscience is going to play a huge role in that. Another area beyond information technology is energy. I think one particular area, energy storage, batteries, for example, understanding how batteries operate at the nanoscale and developing materials, for example, electrolytes that are not liquid and aren't flammable and <laughs> are safer and you know, are able to store, have a greater capacity for energy and are charged faster. Those kind of advances in technology and batteries are going to be helped by nanoscience. Better harvesting energy from the sun by maybe converting sunlight directly to chemical fuel, much like a leaf, so like an artificial leaf. You know, understanding how to do that is going to involve nanoscience. And there's one particular challenge I'm very interested in addressing, and that is the aging water infrastructure in our large cities. I live in a large city, and I see how our water infrastructure is aging. We rely on these massive infrastructure systems to support potable water and to collect wastewater. Aging of these systems obviously can cause very expensive and sometimes devastating problems, and that could directly threat our public health. But thinking that we live in the age of big data and smart cities, at the same time, our water systems are not really very smart at all. So we're really not taking advantage of some of the other technologies that have been used in other infrastructure systems. And I think the reason for that is there is a terrible lack of real-time sensing capabilities that allow us to monitor the health of the water infrastructure system, as well as the quality of water that's in that system. But I strongly believe that nanotechnology can help our water systems become smarter with distributed nanosensors that can detect damages in the infrastructure and can identify water quality problems, such as the occurrence of microbial pathogens, provide much needed data for better management of these precious assets. Because nanotech was new to everybody in the beginning, the things that people could think of using it for were to improve what they were already doing. In other words, to make computer chips better, to make materials stronger, things like that. But now that a lot of progress has been made in that area, and as people went on, the realization that there are altogether new applications unimagined before or thought not possible that might be possible um, in an Apollo type of way. And there are several of these. But one, I think that's really probably going to be underlying something that affects everyone is in the area of sustainability. In other words, we make a lot of stuff in the world, and we make things that are absolutely needed for our survival, and we make things that are helpful for our convenience. But when we make things, 
you know, in the beginning, we'd really just try to figure out a way to make them that is reliable and reproducible. And sometimes those processes consume a lot of energy and a lot of materials. And so one of the things that I think nanotechnology will play a role in is the grand challenge of being able to manufacture more sustainable more and more over time. And it's not always been a priority. I know it's a NNI priority. One of the key initiative areas is sustainable manufacturing, but it's really something that I think we need to work on more. I, I think you know the next generations of scientists and engineers that are coming along want to work on this because it's an investment in the future, their future. And I think it's one that we can prioritize. Where I think we will perhaps see it the most, where it will be the most evident to us, will be in health and medicine. And that's actually not even an area that that I'm in quite yet. The other one I do think is in energy as it relates to materials and materials development. We are becoming more and more knowledgeable and skilled about how to structure materials at the nanoscale in order to get materials to do what we want them to do. And in energy, that might mean, for example, converting one form of energy into another, converting a form of energy that we're not that interested in using into one like electricity that we are very interested in. And so I think that the impact of nanotechnology on materials development and the new materials impact for our energy efficiency, our abilities to convert energy into forms that we use most, that's going to be really profound for us. And we have, I mean, I haven't been at this for too long um, since I'm fairly early in my career, but what I've been able to see in just the past 10 years related to the impact of nanotechnology on materials development has been really amazing. And I think that we are at the point now where we're seeing some of those technologies um, get out into society. And I don't know that everyone realizes that there's nanotechnology embedded in that. And so I hope they realize that these new materials with new capabilities have this nanotechnology aspect to them. Nano is going to have a tremendous impact on energy. One of the examples of quantum dots for more efficient LEDs, various types of nanomaterials will impact many different areas that are related to energy, both from making uh, more efficient water purification, which saves on energy, to be able to make more efficient and lighter materials. And a lot of that work has already started. I think one of the grand challenges will also be in environmental areas. Water purification, in fact, a project I'm also working on now, to be able to understand how one can make much more efficient separators, purifiers, uh, using various types of nanomaterials and nanostructures, I think is one of the big challenges. I guess there are a lot of advances in the world of quantum, so that's quite nano, that's deeply in the nano. So making use of nano size dimension in creating nanomaterials to interact and couple with light. So uh, the applications in photonics, so being able to create better filters, being able to create materials that have uh, band gaps in, they, cre- they have artificial band gaps and therefore are able to manipulate light uh, and being able to image much more precisely is one huge advance. Um, another advance, advance would be um, quantum dots and lasers. So being able to elicit lasing out of, uh, you know, using different colors out of materials that wouldn't have been possible to do before. So all the light coupling into a nanomaterial interactions are certainly very, very impactful and I think are being practiced already. Definitely in the last 15 years, for sure, our ability to fabricate devices has improved tremendously and we're now making much more sophisticated circuit, much more sophisticated processors that are also much smaller. So I think that just uncovering the quantum phenomena and trying to make use of it in the sense of making it serve our purpose, either to make uh, much faster computers that are operating not by the current, by say for, by spintronics, so that spin transfer, or by, by photonics, so using light transport. That is an outlook for the future, and so this is something that has been certainly Uh, being developed in the last 
a decade or so very, very uh, intensely. Thank you for joining us today for this special 15-year anniversary edition of Stories from the NNI. If you would like to learn more about nanotechnology, please visit nano.gov or email us at info at nnco.nano.gov and check back here for more stories.